Come on, just take a moment and begin to lift those hands. God wants to do something in this very moment. But you got to remove yourself from everything else that's going on around you. We give you glory, Jesus. We give you glory in the place on today, Jesus. Do it for your people, God. God, we need your power. We need your spirit like never before. We need a touch from you, on matchless king, like never before. Father, if I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise you enough on today. But God, with every fiber of my being, I worship you and I praise you in this very moment. You are my everything, God. It is you that I live for. The Lord God, my strong tower, my redeemer, my healer, my deliverer. The God that you are. You still sit high and you still look low. God, we can't make it without you. We can't do nothing without your presence, almighty God. So shower down your spirit, oh God. Shower down your presence, almighty God. We believe that anything is possible to them that believe. So we set the atmosphere Truth for a movie banana. Move now, move now. Move now, move now. Move now, move now. Move now, move now. Do it again. Do it again. A fresh In move of your glory. We call open on you now. The heavens are open right now. The, the heavens are open. Do it again, do it again in my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Open my eyes to see Jesus seated upon the throne. Holy Ghost, do it again. He's getting ready to do a new thing. Do it again. Something's getting ready to happen for you. We worship 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 you. We worship. We worship. We worship. We worship. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Have your way, Jesus. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Fall on us today. Fall on us today. Rain on us, Holy Spirit. Rain on us today. Rain on us today. Rain on us today. Rain on us today. Oh, my, 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 my. Glory, Jesus. Spirit. Woo. Spirit. Lift those hands all over the room. Spirit. Spirit. And say, Lord, I surrender. And I bring myself subject Hallelujah. to the anointing of God. Hallelujah, Father, I pray Hallelujah. even now that your will will be done. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the midst of everything that's going on around us, God, we still give your name the praise and the glory and the honor. We lift up holy hands before you, almighty God. 
as a sign of surrenderance to your spirit on today. Not just today, but every day of our life, oh God, we surrender. Not our will, but your will be done. We need you like never before. Father, let me decrease and begin to allow your Holy Spirit to begin to increase even the more. Father, use me as your vessel. Take control of these lips of clay. Take control of my mind, my body, and my spirit. That I will speak what you want me to speak. Say what you want me to say. Father, because I'm nothing without you. So please, Holy Spirit, if you will, sir, use me on today to bring a word of hope, a word of change, a word of deliverance that will begin to shift the hearts and the minds of this, your people. Father, we give you complete access and authority in this atmosphere to do what you want to do, move how you want to move. We exit the fleshly desired place and move into the presence of the Most High God. So have your way on today. Move now. Fill us again. This is my prayer. In your precious son Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Now begin to put those hands together as a sign of reverence to the king reverence to the living savior that he is he's still alive and he still lives he's still my king Woo! come on continue to celebrate jesus come on Give God praise as we welcome our online church on today. Come on. Those of you that are joining us on online church, come on, begin to put those hearts and those likes on the screen. We can't physically see you giving God praise, but we can see those hearts. We can see those likes. Come on, God's going to begin to do something, not just in this building, but he's going to do something in the atmosphere where you're watching from right now. Go ahead, get those watch parties going. Become a social media evangelist right now because the power of the Holy Ghost is about to show up in America. The power of the living God is about to be demonstrated in the world again. Come on, I need somebody to go ahead and praise God. I said it on last week and I'm not going to take it back. Jesus is the answer for the world today. And if you believe that, I need you to go ahead and release the gift that's been given unto you. And that is the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, I need you to begin to release power out of your hands. Release power out of your mouth. Because something is getting ready to shift. Something is getting ready to happen. Not just for you, but everybody that's connected to you. Your family your children your children's children there is a generational miracle of the power of the holy spirit that is getting ready to be released if you believe it somebody shall glory yeah, my, my, my. i need somebody to say power is coming I see your Suzette Spencer. I see your Misha Badger. I see your Dottie Diamond. Somebody say, Power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Put those hands together as you take your seats in the presence of God on today. Come on, we're still practicing social distance. I just want you to look across the room at somebody. Wave at them and say, hey, I just want to let you know it's so good to see you. I ain't got to touch you to speak to you. Because this is the season the Lord said the power you've been needing, amen, is not just in the touch, but it's in your mouth. Whatever you say, 
you're going to have it. Whatever you decree shall be yours. I'm just crazy enough to believe that anything is possible. If you're watching me on social media, I want you to go ahead and comment on somebody else's comment. Go ahead and pass the piece on social media. Let them know it's so good to see them watching. Look at somebody and say, there's a word from the Lord. Channel, that's good. You can just hold right there because uh, this is Pentecost Sunday. There's got to be a sound that comes from the people. Now, 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 before you get in your emotional state, I don't want you praising God out of emotions. Uh, yeah, and I'm, let me go ahead and give my disclaimer now. Let me not apologize for how the Holy Spirit chooses to use me. Uh, because what we need in this day and time is the word of hope and a word of truth. And, and, and somebody got to tell the truth. And, and what God began to speak to me early, early in the morning, a lot of times I don't get much sleep because the Holy Spirit just speaks to me all the time. And the Lord says, I want you to begin to operate in the prophetic anointing in an unusual manner moving forward. Somebody say we give it the move forward. Uh, because you got to begin to understand that if we're going to begin to be the children of God and begin to be God's mouthpiece in the earth, I'm reminded the word of God says, I don't know why everybody jumping up calling themselves prophets today, but the Bible declares and the word is right. And I don't care what some backslidden preacher told you, the word is right and they are wrong because the word of God says that in the last days I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh and my sons and my daughters shall prophesy. I'm telling you right now, we're moving from the season of peace. People are saying I'm a prophet to just prophesying, which means you don't have to have the office to prophesy. Y'all ain't talking to me. Oh, let me let me let me just go into this word really quickly. Uh, I'm gonna move around just a little bit today. I'm gonna move around just a little bit. John chapter seven. John chapter seven. And then we're gonna go to the religious text, Acts chapter two. I want you to hold that in your Bible. But this is not a traditional religious message, even though we're going to the traditional text, uh, because. I told God, and as I began to commune with God, channel, I said, Lord, Holy Spirit, I need you to move supernaturally uh, because I don't want to begin to get into the same flow that every other preacher is moving in. Uh, what America needs is not another preacher. Okay, y'all ain't talking to me. Uh, see, I see, I need a church that's going to talk back to me today. Uh -huh. we, can, we can holler in the streets, we can holler on social media, but we can't holler in church. Uh, I need somebody to holler back at me and say, preacher, you, I hear you talking, I hear you going somewhere. And I, I'm going like to lay a foundation because God says I want you to move in a, in a, in a parameter where every other preacher is not moving. Uh, because the word needs to come forth. And I'm telling y'all that if we're going to ever begin to reach our fullest potential, we're going to have to hold on to Jesus. We're going to have to hold on to what he left us, which is the Holy Spirit. Uh, and I'm going to go a little old school on y'all today because I'm an old school preacher. I may look young, I may walk young, I may talk young, but I'm an old school preacher at heart. So forgive me if I go a little old school on you. Because I don't care how new school you get, you can't throw away the old. Okay, maybe I got the wrong church. It's the old prayers of the righteous that are valid today. Come on here, somebody. The reason why you're in this atmosphere and in this moment, because somebody had enough guts to pray for you. Somebody had a real prayer that knew how to touch, amen, the throne of heaven and not just act like they was doing something. And they released a prayer that began to keep you covered even while you're here. John chapter 7, John chapter 7. I want to start at verse number 37. I'm reading from the modern English translation. And the Bible says that on the last and greatest day, being the feast, Jesus Jesus stood and he cried out. Somebody say cried out. Uh -huh, that sounds like what the world is doing right now. They're crying out. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. If he, if whom, if who believes in me, as the scripture has said, not what everybody else is saying, but as the scripture said. Is that what the Bible says? Uh -huh. He that believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. Somebody say living water. Uh -huh. By this, he spoke of the Holy Spirit. That's what it means. You've been saying it for years. You've been saying it for centuries. Lord, I need my belly to begin to flow with rivers of living water. But why are we not letting the rivers begin to flow? We got to understand it says, by this, he spoke of the Holy Spirit, whom those who believed in him would receive. Look at somebody and say, do you believe? But the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. 
Uh, let me let me let me just read that one more time. I know your legs are getting a little tired, but we got to learn to take a stand. Uh -huh. uh, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Okay, let's go. Let's go to the religious text now. Uh, Acts chapter two. Uh, this is what we all preach on Pentecost, but I want to give it to you a little differently. Uh, in Acts chapter two. Acts chapter two. Uh, this is the coming of the Holy Spirit. And verse number one says, "When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all gathered together in one place." Uh -huh. Notice the Bible says one place, not just a simple place. It didn't say church. It just said come together somehow. Okay, y'all will get this in a minute. Suddenly a sound like a mighty rushing wind came from heaven. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Verse 3 says, there appeared to them cloven tongues of fire being distributed and resting on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. And the Spirit, as the Spirit enabled them to speak. Look at somebody and say, the Spirit going to enable you to speak. Uh -huh. Y'all going to catch this in a minute. I want to just jump to the verse number six. Verse number six says, when this occurred, when this sound occurred, the crowd came together. Mm-hmm. People are come together when there's a sound. Verse 7 says, it says, they were all amazed and marveled. Verse 8 says, how is it that we hear each other in our own native language? Ooh, I want you to just highlight that if you can. Just highlight that. I want to jump down now, going down to verse number 10 as, it's, as we talk about the Arabs. So I said, it says, we hear them speaking in our own languages, the mighty works of God. And then verse 12 says, they were all, they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to each other, what does this mean? Others was mocking them, saying, these men are full of new wine. I believe I'll just stop right there because y'all know the, the philosophy behind this text. I want you to look at your neighbor with all the strength you can muster and say, Lord, send it on down. Uh -huh. That's what I want to talk to you for the next few moments is, Lord, send it on down. You may take a seat right there in the presence of God. And if I can use for a subtopic, the subtopic will be the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. The power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I want you to really begin to understand that because everything that's going on in America right now, everything that's going on in the world right now, we need God to send the Holy Spirit. And I want to let you know the Holy Spirit has already showed up. We have just exited him from the place of our life because you got to understand, I told you I grew up an old church boy, and I'm still that old church boy, and they used to sing a song saying, Lord, send it on down. Let the power of your Holy Ghost come on down. See, some of y'all don't know that. Uh huh. They will sing that song, Chandler, Lord, send down. Send it on down. Lord, let the power of the Holy Ghost come on down. And I want to let you know and echo in the realm of the Spirit on today that that's what we need. We need the Holy Ghost to come on down. We need the Holy Ghost to fall on the people and the children of God again. It's sad in this life when we are going through so much calamity and so much frustration that we are moving in the flesh and not the Spirit of God. I know we're in a season where all hell is broken loose. We got our emotions all stirred up going on. We got justice that need to be served in America. And I, I told God, I said, God, I don't want to get in the same flow of every other preacher in America because many people, everything that's going on with this injustice system, a lot of people getting ready to use it as a teaching moment. They getting ready to begin to take the phrase, I can't breathe, and begin to use it to teach. But I need to tell somebody today, this is not the moment to begin to get a message out of what's going on. This is the moment that you need to begin to call on the Holy Spirit like never before. Can I go ahead and help those that are riding in the streets and those that want justice. I don't care how much you call out George Floyd's name. If you want justice for George, you can't get it without calling on his name. I'm hearing everybody's name that got injustice, but I'm not hearing the name of Jesus. Uh, if you want justice, you got to call for Jesus. Uh, Jesus is what justifies uh, and makes things right. Uh, and that's why we need the Holy Spirit uh, to begin to come down. Uh, oh, I know what you're saying, but they're killing our unarmed men. Uh, but I got news for you. The Holy Spirit spoke to me early in the morning. Uh, they're not killing unarmed men uh, because we got to start teaching the men of God uh, and the women of God what power we have. Uh, preacher, I don't understand. Uh, how are you telling me they're not killing unarmed men? Uh, 
because you got a weapon called praise. And if the church will stand up and start being the church and start teaching people how to use their weapon when justice needs to be served and trouble shows up, my Bible says release a sound and it release. Y'all sit down. I ain't mean to go that far just yet, but you got to understand uh, we got to teach the people of God uh, that you got to use your weapon of praise. Uh, what will begin to happen uh, if every injustice situation, uh, when we find ourselves into diverse temptations, uh, begin to call on the name of Jesus? Uh, uh, the Bible says that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Uh, that don't matter if you're black, white, polka dot, purple, blue, or green. Uh, it says every knee must bow. Uh, at the name of Jesus. But I'm seeing it over and over again. So many people angry. So many people going crazy. But nobody's calling on Jesus. Woo. But we want justice. You got to call on the name of Jesus. That's why we need the Holy Spirit to come down because when the Holy Spirit comes down, uh, amen, everything begins to shift. Everything uh, begins to change. That's why the Bible says this now. Uh, it says when the day of Pentecost had fully come, uh, you got to understand you can't be in this thing halfway. Uh, you don't need half. You can't get half of the Holy Ghost. Uh, you got to have the whole thing. Uh, that's what's some wrong with some of the church folks now. You got half of the Holy Ghost. Ain't no such thing uh, It's half of the Holy Ghost uh, because like my wife preached on Wednesday night, some of y'all think he's in it. He's not an it. He's a person. And you got to understand that we need him to sit on us. I want you to understand this. Let me, I told you I gave y'all my disclaimer early because some of y'all trying to figure out and you can't keep following what the world system is doing. Because can I go ahead and just be real? Because somebody got to be a real prophet. Because before the situation happened with Jordan. I prophesied the week before. I said, this is not the only thing after Corona that's going to hit America. Now, some of y'all missed that because some of y'all too busy looking at people and looking at what people are saying. Uh-huh. Y'all following the crowd instead of following the cloud. But here is what I was doing while everybody else was doing ahead they own say. I didn't post nothing on social media. I didn't say nothing to nobody about it. Maybe you said, Pastor, you insensitive because you ain't said nothing. No, I don't have to say nothing because I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. And when God chooses to speak, then I'll speak. And what the Holy Ghost spoke to me earlier, Chandler, he says it's just another spirit that is being released. I said, Holy Ghost, what you mean? He says, look at the signs. God will always show you a time. Are you ready? Because I'm about to mess y'all up. The reason it's a spirit that happened to George is this. Why? Because it's the same spirit that's attached to Corona. Why? When Corona was first released, it has a symptom saying you can't breathe. When he was dying on that pavement, he shouted out, I can't breathe. Y'all ain't hearing me. And the same thing that the justice system is saying, when Corona here, stay home. Now you got preachers that's preaching a message for the church to stay home and keep rioting. Oh, Y'all ain't got this. It's the same spirit. It's just transferring. Watch this. And watch this. The thing about Corona was it hit every city and every state. Y'all, I ain't been watching the news. Every city and every state got a protest going right now. God told me earlier this morning, he said, it's the same spirit of Corona. And God said, if the people don't wake up and begin to call on the name of Jesus, he said, it's going to be a rapid fire from the enemy and going to keep us and wipe us out prematurely. That's why we got to get into to a place uh, where we say, what does God have to say, not people? Uh, we're too busy. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. I'm not trying to be insensitive. I'm trying to give you direction. I'm trying to give you direction. Because if the world is ever going to change, we already know what the word says. We're living in perilous times. But if we're going to begin to get the best out of this life, we can't do it without the Holy Spirit. We got to have the person of the Holy Spirit walking with us and in us. Okay, y'all are going to catch this in a minute. That's why he says when the day of Pentecost had come, watch this now. That's why something, I know some of y'all got my text message, it was, it's an urgency. This is not like any other Pentecost Sunday. Because Pentecost always falls in the middle of chaos, okay. Because the only thing, watch this now, that can fight fire is fire. Okay. 
I'm going to say it again. The only thing that can fight fire is fire. I'm going to help some of y'all in a minute. He says this. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they was all in one place and suddenly a sound came rushing. A rushing wind. Come on. For all of y'all that are screaming, you can't breathe. You're about to get your second wind. Uh -huh, because there's a mighty rushing wind coming out. What is the rushing wind? That was the Ruach of God. The breath of God. Okay, I wish I had a church in here I could preach to. Uh, that's the Ruach anointing, which is the breath of God. Uh -huh. Somebody say breath, the breath, the breath. The breath of God, that rushing wind came from heaven and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Now, now I want y'all to really understand it because some of y'all don't know who they are. I, 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 I pray for God to give me a simplicity in this message. Because a lot of people preach the word of God and you have no clue of who they're talking about or how to dissect this scripture. Because you don't understand who they are because for years you've been taught they was everybody that was in assembly. It was not. They was the ones, the followers of Jesus Christ, the ones who had sat at his feet, those who was already believers of Christ. That's who the Holy Spirit set on first. And that's why we got to train up righteous leaders to be disciples of the kingdom of God. Not about getting a microphone, not about trying to be the best preacher, but we need disciples that simply believe in Jesus. Oh, my God. Look at somebody say, do you believe? you get this now because you're in a place when it talks about they, they're talking about the disciples. So the first thing that happens, Bonnie, now you have the disciples of Jesus Christ. They're all together in one place. Jesus Christ has ascended now and now they're waiting on the prophecy to be fulfilled. But while they're waiting, they're not sitting around doing what everybody else is doing. They're together in one place. And when they got together in one place, the Bible says uh, there was a sound from heaven. Not from the people on the outside. See, everybody's looking around, but we ain't looking up. Old school, look towards the hills from which cometh my help. I'm going to say it again. Look toward the hills from which cometh my help. All of my help cometh from where? The Lord. It didn't say from mama. It didn't say from my spouse. It didn't say from my brother. It says all of my help cometh from the Lord. Not protesters. Huh? Come on, not doctors, not lawyers. Huh? But my help cometh from the Lord. Woo! All my help, all my help. Now, now, here's the thing, because they was all together in one place. And while they're in one place, there's a whole lot of other folks around. Now, the Bible does not specifically say how many men and women were just standing around congregating. But what it does say is this. One thing is clear, that there was 12 that got the, the, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Okay, watch this. While they were together in one place, the mighty rushing wind from heaven came, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting, and there appeared to them tongues of fire being distributed and resting on each of them. I told y'all that each of them is the disciples. And they were what? All filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them to speak. See, what's it? Why we need the Holy Spirit to come down? Because when the Holy Spirit comes down, it'll enable you to speak. Okay. Uh -huh. some, of you, some of you, we got America right now trying to be a voice and nobody's listening. Because then they have not been enabled by the Holy Spirit. Oh, my God. Because the Holy Spirit will give you what to say and when to say. The Holy Spirit know how to constrain your mouth. Okay, can I just get, go ahead and use this as a testimony? Do I have anybody that you was one, uh, uh, one, you were just one string and one moment away from letting somebody have it, telling them how you really feel? But if it wasn't for the Holy Ghost closing your mouth, you would have said something you knew you didn't have no business saying. And that's why you got to give praise and thanks for the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit know how to restrain you. The Holy Spirit know how to cover you when you don't want to be covered. Okay. Okay. I, I'm, I'll tell you I'm going old school on you, right? Because now, now the old church called the Holy Spirit the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. uh, and, and, uh, and as I was allowing the Lord to speak to me, woman of God, I said, God, why did the old church call this thing the Holy Ghost? Uh -huh. Because it's still a spirit 
And God took me into the natural arena, and he says, a ghost in the spirit is basically the same thing. But here's the difference. is how you see it in your imagination. I said, what did you mean? He says, because when you first say spirit, you don't know what it looks like. It just provokes something when it moves. That's what a spirit does. Watch this now. And he said, the reason the old church called it the Holy Ghost is because they saw the miracles. They saw the works moving and in operation. Okay. Because a ghost can be a spirit, but a ghost is covered with a white sheet, which means you can see it when it moves. And the only thing you can see is the eyes. Y'all ain't hearing me. Uh, and God said, that's what the Holy Ghost does. The Holy Ghost in the old generation covered you. So that when you move, you didn't move out of the timing of God. But now that Jesus has ascended, he said the Holy Spirit, amen, absent the Holy Ghost has showed up on the scene. So now you can move without the enemy knowing where you're moving in. Because some of you, you're sitting beside an enemy. And you need this Holy Spirit to begin to shift. Under the radar. Uh, that's how powerful the Holy Spirit is. Whether you call it the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, when are we going to see the power of the Holy Spirit in operation? When are we going to see the Holy Spirit moving again in the church and in America? When are we going to see the Holy Spirit begin to heal blind eyes and make lame begin to walk? When are we going to see the power of the Holy Spirit? That's why I really want to lean towards teaching. I know I can preach you real good, but I want to teach you. Because if I teach you the power of the Holy Spirit... And if we did what the Bible says, train up a child in the way they should go, it don't matter what injustice shows up. When you get in a situation that's not in your favor, you cry out Jesus. You cry out and give God praise because the word still says it's your praise that confuses your enemy. Uh -huh. I've never seen a victim crying out for Jesus and crying out giving God praise and injustice. What would happen if the whole city of Houston was to just go down and give God praise downtown instead of acting a fool downtown? Oh, my God. What would happen if we provoked the spirit of God? But nobody wants the spirit because we in our spirit. We think we have the answer. We think we know everything. But Jesus is the answer. And you got to go and dissect these things. Everything that happens, God sends a sign. And you got to understand today, if you don't take nothing else from this message, you go home today and you tell all your friends, you tell everybody you know, tell them, say, in, in the time of trouble, call on the Holy Ghost. In your time of calamity in the time when you don't know what's coming in the world, when you don't know what's going on in America, you call on the name of Jesus. I don't care if you got to put it on a t-shirt and wear it every day. I don't care if you got to put it on your car mirror, your bathroom mirror, to remind you. Like my Karen showed me some on her screensaver. She said, Pastor, I got to put this on my screensaver. It was something I said. And she took a, a screenshot from Facebook and put it on her as a screensaver. She said, because I need to be reminded every time I look down at my phone because the enemy been trying some things. You got to put some systems in place to remind you that God got, you, got your back. You got to put some systems in place to know and remind you to call on his name. That's what I do when I'm going through a situation and I don't have the revelation for it. I call on Jesus. I don't have to try to fight. Because the Bible says that vengeance is his. Uh -huh. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. What happened to, I should not have to fight in this battle. But I see a whole lot of people wanting to fight. Church folks fighting against other church folks. Preachers fighting against other preachers. Why is the Holy Ghost? This is what the Bible says. They were all filled and begin to speak in unknown tongues as the Holy Spirit enabled them to speak. Now, this is what I want you to understand because verse 5 says this, when this sound occurred. See, when you got the Holy Ghost, there's a sound 
that it's released. You ain't got to be the best preacher. You ain't got to be the best singer. Guess what? I can't sing, but guess what? I got the Holy Ghost. So that means I had people tell me, Pastor, you need to get a record. You and your wife need to get a record. I can't sing a lick. I just know how to operate in the Holy Ghost. Because when I open up my mouth and let the Holy Ghost move, amen, it sounds like a, 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 a sweet sound. The Bible says when the sound occurred, the crowd came together. There's a sound that the people of God should be releasing right now that calls people to come together. And that sound is only released through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's a difference between making a sound and making noise. I'm going to say it again. There's a difference between making noise and making a sound. And sadly to say, we got a large generation just making noise. Because when you make noise, it just goes everywhere. But when you release a sound, there are vibrations. There are signals that are sent forth into the earth. And there are things that must absorb that sound. When we release this sound with the Holy Ghost, it don't matter if people know the name of Jesus or not. That Holy Spirit will begin to cause that sound to begin to absorb in their spirit. And that's when the Bible says men will come running saying, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to begin to know about this man named Jesus? When we release that sound and allow their spirit to begin to absorb it. Here's the thing I want you to understand. It said the crowd came together. Verse 7, it said, and they were all amazed. They were all amazed. And they marveled, saying to each other, are not these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of them in their own, in our own native language. Here you have a few good men. A few good men releasing the power of the Holy Ghost sitting on them. Those around them become curious. I'm curious, Bonnie. What gave the disciples the right to receive the Holy Spirit? And not those in observance. You ever wondered, you've been around somebody that's just constantly being blessed and you wonder why you ain't got hit with it? Okay. Maybe I got the wrong church. You ever wonder why everything is going right for everybody else and you ain't got it yet? This was a similar situation because they're looking at a few good men receive something that looks a little funny. The Bible says these men got to be drunk with new wine. They've fallen all over the place. They have lost self-control. Uh-oh. Watch this. I'm going to say it again. They have lost self-control. Some of you, what you need to do is lose self-control. What do you mean? I thought I was supposed to have self-control. No, because you're trying to control yourself and not let the Holy Spirit control you. That's why you went and said something before you were supposed to say anything. And that's why God had to retract the blessing. Because you released it before it was time for it to be released. Because you didn't have self-control. And God is saying some of you need to lose that self-control and allow the Holy Spirit to control you. Stop trying to control yourself. Some of y'all, I've seen people, and I've been around plenty of people. I mean, millionaires to poor people, it don't matter who you are. I've seen people write stuff down and have planners, and they plan their entire life out, and I don't see Jesus in the play out. Well, when are you going to allow the Holy Spirit to control you? I had to do something because I was unctioned by the Holy Ghost and didn't know I was going to start using it, but I had to go and buy me a journal. And I had to start writing what I hear because God said, he said I'm about to start speaking to you prophetically on, on, like, a, like a rush. And I need you to begin to jot these things down because you can't depend on your memory. 
And there are some things that God going to speak to you. And I challenge all of you to do the same. If you got to get a notepad in your phone, I don't care what you got to do. When you begin to get a thought or you begin to get a good idea, you better jot it down and not depend on your memory. Because some of you, this is the season God going to release a million dollar ideas and show you how to uh, uh, begin to produce wealth in the midst of a famine. But you're going to be depending on your natural mind and you're going to lose it. So I had to begin to get to a place, and God spoke to me this morning. I had to write some things down. I said, I can't forget this. Because God said, you reminded. We didn't preach it, but every preacher that's supposed to have been filled with the Holy Ghost said this was the year of vision. Okay? We're supposed to be able to see 2020. Y'all remember that, right? Write the vision, make it plain. But where is the writings? It don't do you no good to holler out vision but no writing. You got to begin to make documentation so that the Holy Spirit can have something to work with. All right. This is what happens. It said they start speaking in their language. That's why... I'm so excited about us doing outreach. I wish we could do it every, 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 every single Saturday, but I know y'all need rest. I know y'all need rest. So come back on June 20th and 27th. We're going to give away some more free groceries. The number's going to triple. Watch. Watch this. Uh, uh, because this is what the Holy Ghost said. And a lot of people that come through the line, I told y'all they speak a different language. And I was speaking. I had the privilege yesterday to go through the line because I was trying to adjust some things up. And I was talking to some of the people. And one lady said, I, I, I know, don't want to play English. I said, you don't understand English. She said, no. But I began to talk to her in my own language, but she understood me. Y'all miss this. Y'all don't get this. See, when you got the Holy Spirit, you don't have to speak it in the natural. You speak it in the spirit. Because you can begin to speak and God will cause them to hear. I, I, I wish I could have recorded it, but I can't document everything because God didn't tell me to do it. I wish I could have let everybody know because that was a miracle that took place. The woman spoke no English. No English. And I was able to communicate with her, not through Siri, not through Google Translate, but just by the Holy Ghost. Because I looked at her in her eyes and I made contact with her spirit. And I said, this is what I'm trying to tell you. Do you understand? She said, yes, I understand. And there was even some words that I didn't even speak in Spanish. And I heard my dialect begin to go into Spanish. Y'all ain't hearing me. We're moving into a season for those that really have the Holy Ghost. You ain't going to have to take no Spanish class, no French class. But when you open your mouth in their presence, you're going to speak their language. And they'll understand what you are saying because it's the Holy, Sp Holy Ghost that's going to speak for you. The Holy Spirit can speak any language. I don't have to go get a class and a book. Ain't nothing wrong with that. God told you to do that, do that. But I'm talking about how powerful the Holy Spirit is. That's the power behind the Holy Ghost. You don't have to take a class because the Holy Spirit is the teacher in himself. He's the master teacher. That's why he can take somebody from the projects, ain't got no education, ain't never been to school, ain't never done nothing. He can take a wino off the street, don't have nothing, don't have a degree, and begin to wipe them clean. And they can be one of the biggest preachers in America. That bring revival. Because the Holy Spirit, when it comes upon you, it teaches you something. Watch this now. They were speaking a different language. We hear them speaking in our own language. The mighty works of God. And they were all amazed. Now, I want you to, because let me skip over real quick. Come on the end this in about five minutes. Give me five minutes. I'm going to let you go home. I promise you. Because some of y'all, no, 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 I can't take my time because some of them I want them to keep the Holy Spirit in the head. And some of them are getting lost right now talking about chicken. I want you to understand this. I want you to understand this because some of you, your phone going off. And I wish we could really go back to this old generation where they made you cut your cell phone off before you come to church. But I know we're in a technology generation. I wish we could do it. I, I wish we could. Because the enemy uses that thing as a distraction sometimes. And next thing you know, here, you get it on vibrator. And then in brief, you looked at it and then you don't miss the whole point. Just that quick. Because you've gave that thing more power than you've given God. And God can be trying to get you something. And the enemy know what the word is. Ready. They let the devil know every word I'm getting ready to say. He know. He was there when I was studying it. 
And he said, um, she, if, if she hit this, if he hit that, it's going to cause him to line up. Let me go ahead and send a text message. Let me cause their favorite Facebook preacher to put up a status. Y'all laughing, but it's real. It's real. But I, I wish we could really go back to that reverence. That when you came into the, I'm told you I'm old school. You had they had that big sign. Please turn off your cell phone. No food or drink in the sanctuary. Why? There was a reason for that. Because you didn't need no distractions. I told y'all last week we done made church a social club. Just let me sit around with three or four people and you make me feel good. I got oh, that's good. That's the Holy Ghost. That ain't the Holy Ghost. The Holy, Holy Ghost convicts you. The Holy Ghost makes you want to live right. The Holy Ghost makes you want to stand up right. The Holy Ghost makes you question some things you've done in your life. The Holy Ghost makes you begin to say, Lord, help me, please. I wish we could go back to them days. I probably wouldn't have a church, but I don't care. Uh, but I, w I wish we could get to that point where you, but, you know, we could so send this, do this on social media. I know we're live streaming. I, ain't, I know it's a new technology generation. But you got to be mindful of how the enemy knows how to use technology. The Bible says, I'm not ignorant of his devices. What is your phone? It's a device. I'm not ignorant of his devices. So I'm going to help you. Because, Pastor, you're talking about a whole lot about the power of the Holy Spirit. I've heard this preach, 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 preach about the Holy Spirit. Why am I not seeing the evidence of the Holy Spirit? Better yet, the major question we should be asking is, how do I receive the Holy Spirit? Because there's some of you watching me, there's some of you in this room right now, you don't have the Holy Spirit. Oh, my God. Thinking you got the Holy Spirit and having the Holy Spirit is two completely different things. So the real question is, without the show of hands, not the raising of hands, not the gesture of your body language. It's who has the Holy Spirit. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you better be glad you came to church. They're going to tell you how to get the Holy Ghost. The thing is, we think it's so complicated. We made getting the Holy Ghost channel spooky. Because it's the Holy Ghost. It's spooky. We've made receiving the Holy Spirit difficult. It's the easiest thing, and we miss it every day. And we allow life and people to train up our thoughts to make us think we got the Holy Ghost and we feel with it. Because we say the Holy Ghost does this. The Holy Ghost is supposed to act like this. If you had the Holy Ghost, you would act like this. So now some of you are just good actors in having the Holy Ghost. Watch this. Can I tell you? Oh, I, I may not need to say this. I don't know if I need to say it. I, I may not need to say it. Can I tell you that the Holy Spirit is the only person that can transform? Which means he don't have to adjust to the times. He creates his own time. So just when you think you've gotten comfortable and gotten used to the Holy Ghost, he does something different. That's why we need more spirit-filled churches because some of y'all say, I'm not going to church this Sunday because I can already predict what's going to happen. That's because that church don't have the Holy Ghost. But what the Holy Ghost does in a spirit-filled church is that I cannot miss this week because I don't know what's going to happen. But I know something's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen, I, I, but I just know the Holy Ghost going to show up. I know something going to happen. I don't care who preaching. I don't care who's singing. I just know that the Holy Ghost going to do something I can't miss. You ever had that feeling? If you ever find a church like that, that's a good church. I'm glad I'm a part of Breakthrough. Why? Because every Sunday is different. You don't know. It may be a Sunday I can't even preach. It may be a Sunday, oh, I just know the band going to play this sound. The band don't even play at all. Uh-oh. Because the people are crying out. That's what a spirit-filled church does. Spirit-filled churches don't go by programs. 
Now don't get that twisted with order. I believe everybody should have order. It's been, let all things be done in decency and in order. But real spirit-filled and spirit-led churches. Notice I said spirit-filled and spirit-led. Because you can't be filled if you ain't been led. You have to be led by the Holy Spirit. That's why our leaders can't just get into a systematic flow. And because when you get into a systematic flow and ain't taking the other people there, there's no filling. But when you're operating in the Holy Ghost, everybody ought to be absorbing that sound. And there ought to be a constant flow that everybody feels that sound. Oh, my God. How do, Pat, let me give you the message. Pastor, you, you can replace something soft in a minute, Channel. I'm, I'm, I promise you I'm closing it right now. How do I get the Holy Ghost? How do I get filled? I've been in church all my life, and I don't even know if I'm filled. I went to church with Grandmama. I don't, I don't know if I got the Holy Ghost. Well, I'm new to this thing. I grew up in the streets. What is the Holy Ghost? Why do I need the Holy Ghost? I just told you. The Holy Spirit is literally your GPS to everything in life. The Holy Spirit literally is your advocate. That's when you say, he's my lawyer in the courtroom. When they say that in the old church, when they say he, that's the Holy Spirit. That ain't just, oh, my, my, my lawyer, my buddy down, he went to school for 15 years as a lawyer. He my lawyer in the courtroom. No, he, he my doctor in the sick room. That's the Holy Spirit. He's my bomb in Gilead. That's the Holy Spirit. That's what they're referring to. That's who he is. It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is literally your agent. If he was a, if the, if, if the Holy Spirit was an NBA agent or NFL agent, he goes out and gets all of your contracts and your deals and makes sure you get paid your fullest value. That, 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 if I can compare it so you can understand that. The Holy Spirit gives you access to everything you can't access yourself. So you don't have to work, you just rest. That's what the Holy Spirit is. Okay, here's the big question. Pastor. You said all that. You said you're going to close five times. Okay, I am. How do I get the Holy Spirit? How? Well, it's right here in the scripture. Now, most people don't get to this scripture on Pentecost. Because we like to shout and dance on the rushing wind. But what happened after the wind is left? Uh-oh. Because after the wind is left, after the rendezvous is over, you know, those of you that's married, you know, you went on that honeymoon, it was, you, was, it was the, you loved that honeymoon, it was, you still remember it to this day. But what happened when the honeymoon is over? How do I live? Do, how do I survive? After the honeymoon stage. After the wind is over, how do I live? And walk and still be God's child. Flip over, over, and over till you get to verse number 36. Most people don't visit this on Pentecost Sunday because they think it's not important. Because for years, and just what I've learned over the years, people only focus on leadership having the Holy Spirit. They only focus on the 12 disciples. Having the Holy Spirit, those that preach, those that teach. If you're going to be over children's church, you got to have the Holy Ghost. If you're going to be over the musicians, you got to have the Holy Ghost. What about the people in the pews? Because that's what they came for, to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Okay. This part has been torn out of the Bible for many years because we've been shouting and dancing on the Russian wind. We fall out, get hands laid on us. The rushing wind of the Holy Ghost. And you ain't got nothing but a sweaty palm on your head. Here, here, here's the scripture you need to take home. Now I need you to reset your mind real quick so you can adjust this and take it home with you. How do I get the Holy Ghost? The Bible says in verse 36, therefore, 
Let all the house of Israel assuredly know that God has made this Jesus that we serve, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. I'm getting to it. Verse 37. When they heard this, they were stung in their heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? How we get this Holy Spirit? What do I need to do to get it? What do I need to do to get what you got? Peter answers them in verse 38. I want you to take this home and sleep on it, write it down, or look at it every day of your life. If you ain't got the Holy Ghost. Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of sins, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say it again. That, that, that went right past their ear. They, I, I didn't catch all that. That was, a little, that was a little King James slang on it. I missed that. You know, break it down in layman's terms so I can understand. I need, I need, I need you to help me understand. Repent and be baptized. Repent means, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. It's coming into the knowledge that you make mistakes. Repentance starts off saying just be real and tell the truth. You know you ain't dusty as you, you know you ain't all sparkly like you think you sparkling and make other people think you are. You got issues just like everybody else. Just repent. You made mistakes just like everybody else. Just repent. You did some things you was not proud of. Just say, Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I said some things to some people when I should have kept my mouth closed. I repent. That's, 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 that's one part. Repent. And be baptized. Now, now, let me, let me, let me help y'all. Be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to watch this because Jesus never baptized. Uh-oh. Jesus never baptized. His disciples did. Ooh. But it was John that first began baptisms. Here's the Holy Spirit. the power of the Holy Spirit. I told you the Holy Spirit know how to conform. So even when you don't have water or a pool, that don't just give you an excuse to say, I can't be baptized. That's why it says there's more than one baptism. Woo. Oh, my God. And there's more in multiple fillings. Okay, okay. Uh, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Not in your mama's name. Not in the name of the church. No, no, I, know, I see a whole lot of people baptizing in the name of the church. What is that? Where do you get that from? I baptize you in the name of Bethesda, Greater St. Stephenson, Missionary, Baptist Church, Pentecostal. Where do we get that from? Where do we get that from? When the word said we baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. No other way you can be baptized. So repent, be baptized, watch this. For the forgiveness of your sins. And then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's a gift. So here's what, this is what I love about God. Here's what happens in the natural. Let me give it to you while y'all can plainly understand this. Stand up, Bonnie. Come right here. Here's what happens. Bonnie says, how do I get the Holy Ghost? The problem is some of y'all have gotten so quick that you want to get to the tongues before you get to receiving. So you have been taught, open your mouth and talk like a baby. You got the Holy Ghost. No, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Spirit don't always speak in tongues. That's just an evidence. Okay. I ain't got time to go with all of it. Come back Bible study. Watch this. She says, how can I get the Holy Ghost for the Holy Spirit, new generation? I see everybody falling out, looking like they're drunk, getting blessed. 
like they ain't got a care in the world. How do I get that? She says, I got to repent. First thing, repent. Here's what the Holy Spirit does. While it's moving on those around her, the Holy Spirit can still speak to her. And guess what? It ain't always through the pastor. It ain't always through the elders. The Holy Spirit can be sitting right beside you and somebody just get a quick and say, whew, and start praying for you. And you don't even know they're praying for you. What the Holy Spirit does is move around her. That's where the wind comes in. You ever had somebody walk by you fast, you feel the wind? A car go by you real fast, you feel the wind? The Holy Spirit comes like a wind. That's the rushing wind you feel. But here's the difference. It don't feel like an ordinary wind. It feels like you lose your balance. It feels like something snatches you out of yourself. So the Holy Spirit moves around her in the natural. He just moves. She can't see it, but it's moving on everything and everybody. And she's like, this is looking funny. What is going on? She's seeing things. People act strange. Why is pastor walking around me like this and moving around me like this? Why don't you just tell me what to do? Because the Holy Spirit is strange. It don't operate when you want it to operate. It don't do what you want it to do. It does what it needs to do. And then what happens is the more she starts trying to figure it out, the more the Holy Spirit starts to deal with her. And the first thing the Holy Spirit does, it says, repent. I want to date you, but you done, done all this other stuff. You got to get all that baggage out your closet. I want you to be my bride. That's the Holy Spirit. Ain't that what the Christ said? Christ, shoot, okay. If I'm not preaching Bible, tell me I ain't preaching Bible. He said, come back for his church, the bride. The Holy Spirit said, I want to marry you. But you got to get rid of some stuff. And the first thing she can do before he put a ring on it, she got to repent of everything she's done. Watch this. Here's the, here's the hard part. Because she's afraid. Because she don't even like what she's done. And she's afraid that what she's done can never be forgiven. Why? Because people around her, if they knew what you had done, they wouldn't want to be around you. But this is the difference between the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit don't walk away from you. It walks towards you and gets closer to you. It wants to wrap itself around you. It wants to wrap itself, entangle itself in your sin. Why? Because it eradicates it. So the first thing that the Holy Spirit has to do is to begin to call you to repentance. Dump it out. Take the trash out. One thing, you know, coming up, and I got kids of my own, the hardest thing to get a child to do is take out the trash. It, that don't matter what generation you're in. From generation to generation, you all, have you ever found yourself always getting to tell somebody, can you take out the trash? And that's what the Holy Spirit is trying to get. Can you just take out the trash? Stop making all these excuses. Just take out the trash. Dump it out. And after she repents, it says, be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. Now, repentance means, Lord, forgive me of my sins, right? But the baptism comes on and says that now after you've repented and asked me to forgive you for those sins, I got to wash you so I can. Because before I can get it on you, you got to take it off of you. Okay. So I need you to empty everything out and then let me wash you. It's kind of like when you take a shower, you take a bath, you got to take all your clothes off before the water get on you. You, if, you, if you just go take a shower and jump in the bathtub with your clothes on, you're just crazy. Why? Because there's some dirt that's on the, under, the, the inner part. 
the under layer of your spirit. Watch this. So he says, take off, repent and take off all them clothes of the world. Everything you've done, take it off. Strip it off. And step into the shower of the Holy Ghost. And let me wash you. Baptize you. Baptizing gets all that mess off of you. All the sins. And that's when you're truly forgiven. When he washes you white as snow. Oh, my God. And watch this now. He says, after that, then you get the gift. So what happens is, after you've done all that, the Holy Spirit says, here's my gift to you. The Holy Spirit is a gift. And when the Holy Spirit gives you himself as a gift, now she has access. There's nothing she cannot do. Nothing she cannot accomplish. Nothing that will be too hard for her. Why? Because he says, I'll never put more on you than, I, than you can bear. That's what the Holy Ghost says. I'll never put more on you than you can deal with. I know it feels like you're crushing you, but it's not going to kill you because you got the Holy Ghost. I know it feels like you ain't going to make it, but you can make it because you got the Holy Ghost. I know it feels like you're losing your mind, but you ain't losing it because you got the Holy Ghost. I know it feels like that everybody's against you instead of being for you, but the Holy Ghost is with you. You got the Holy Ghost. That's the gift. The Holy Spirit is the gift that keeps on giving. It's the gift that keeps on giving. It's the only gift you can use for the rest of your life. If I give any of you a gift today, you can break down. You can lose it. But the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, is a gift that will last you a lifetime unless you don't receive it. So what he says is, here, Bonnie, this is my gift to you. And whatever capacity you need to use this gift, you ever, some of y'all probably ain't seen it because y'all so spiritual. You don't watch kind of, you know, it's demonic, you know. But there was a series, I don't, I don't know how I came across it, called Netflix. I think it was called Skeleton Key or something. Lock and Key, Lock and Key or something. But whatever it is, they walk in this house, they got a bunch of keys, and you can, it's different keys to open different doors. That's what the Holy Spirit said. He says, I'm your master key to everything in life. And whatever doors you need me to open, you may be in a room with depression right now, but I'm, I'm here to let you know that this gift called the Holy Spirit can get you out of that depression. You may be in a place right now where you feel frustrated, you feel angry. But here's the thing. Use this key of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit know how to adjust to whatever door you need open. So what the Holy Spirit said, here's this gift that whenever you need me to work for you, I'm working. I'll work for you in every area of your life. You don't have to do it in your own strength. I will work for you. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Thank you. I want y'all to see that. Why? Because it's given to you. Now watch this. It's up to her to take it. Can I help debunk religion? A lot of y'all get to repentance, but you don't receive the gift. You say, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. I want to be baptized. But some of y'all, when you get to that place, you just get baptized on the outside, not the inside. You don't really get a refilling because your mind drew you back out. So your body just went in, but your spirit didn't. So you didn't receive. But you confess. You ask for forgiveness, and you wonder why you're still going through hell. You need the Holy Spirit. Let's recap. I'm done. How do I get the Holy Spirit? Repent. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, forgiven of your sins, and then you will receive what? The gift of the Holy Spirit. Stand to your feet. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Verse 39, for the promise is to you. The promise is to you. And to your children. The Holy Spirit ain't just for you. This gift is for your entire bloodline. The promise is to you and your children. And to all who are far away. 
as many as the Lord our God will call. Will you answer the call? Will you answer the call? This altar is open today. and I shouldn't have to pull you to the altar when you know you need something. Whatever you need from God today is, is here. It's here. Maybe you want the gift of the Holy Spirit. But I, I, I'm scared to move because people going to think I ain't got the Holy Ghost in. Let that stuff go. Let that stuff go. You can't keep living your life in the flesh and living for people. When are you going to stand up and live your life for Jesus? This altar is open. If you feel led to be drawn to this altar, if you say, Lord, I'm, maybe you need the Holy Ghost. Maybe you just need to think clearly. Maybe you just got a lot on your shoulders right now. And you're saying, Lord, I, I just need some direction. 